Hi everybody. I'll wait for a few more people to join um, and then we'll get started. This is Honey. She's a little bit nervous because her mum normally stays with us um, when she's being groomed. So this is the first time that she's by herself. Um, so we have to be very patient with her. But um, hi, Florence and Tony, if you're watching. Um, so we'll just give her a few more minutes to relax. Good job, Pam. Okay, so she's nice and relaxed now. So we are going to go through different tools that I use when I'm brushing cavoodles or curly coated dogs. I'm going to go through a few little de-matching tools as well and different combs. So this is a comb I use a lot of. So I'm going to talk about um, different combs as well and different sprays that we can use to help remove any little knots and tangles. And um, we're right to go, Tom? Yep. Perfect. All right. So we've got some people tuned in. So welcome again to our grooming channel. So I try and upload um, around about uh, one video a week. Plus, I'm trying to do a live grooming video every Saturday. So I want to be able to help you guys through, um, through all the different lockdowns that we've got going on at the moment. Okay, honey? He's a bit nervous. Okay, so let's talk about different slickers. So most of the time, the slickers are generally all the same. There's only little things that are different between each slicker. So I'm going to go through our two flexi slickers that I use, and that's these two. Um, I really like using a flexi slicker because it is quite flexible. I'm going to try and do this with one hand. Good yeah, darling. And you can see how it's nice and flexible on both sides and this slicker also has a, a firm side which is a black side and then it will have a softer side um, as well and that's the same as this slicker. This slicker is a little bit firmer on the darker side and then softer on the light coloured side. So Let's talk about how the pins are situated on the slicker. So if we see the pins on this slicker, wait for it to focus, they come out and then on a slight angle. So this helps assist us separating the coat as well as as we're going through our dog's coat. It helps separate and when the pins are actually bent, it helps rip and remove any dead coat, any knots and tangles. So every slicker I use has pins that come out in an angle and then a little bit more of a sharp angle. And then I'm going to talk about our slicker that has our protective pins. So this slicker is actually, let's just sort of focus. This pin is perfect for dogs who have sensitive skin or dogs that have um, broken skin or if you've got a dog that has any immune problems and their skin's not very, um, very strong and has... Um, a lot of dander. This is perfect because it actually won't scratch the skin. Good girl, honey. Um, and you can see that. So it's actually really perfect for um, puppies as well as older dogs or the little sensitive little dogs. So I use this a lot on puppies. And then we have our universal. So this slicker is a quite a firm slicker, 
So if you've got a dog that has a really curly type coat, Honey has more of a drop coat. So it still has a lot of curl to it, but it drops more and it's quite fine. So she gets those really fine little tangles. I wouldn't use this on her coat. I would use a slicker um, like this slicker where the pins are closer together so the coat's going to separate a lot more. Whereas a universal is quite a firm slicker and the pins are further apart. So it's not going to separate the coat as well, but it is going to remove any knots and tangles as well as any dead hair that needs to be removed. So it's really good at straightening coats. So if your caboodle has more of a curly coat, more of a poodle coat, um, this is great as well. So if it's a little bit more wiry, um, this is a slicker for you. That's all right. I know, I know. I know. And now I'm going to quickly run through um, three different combs that I mostly use when I brew. This little comb here I use a lot of. So it has a medium tooth side and then it has a coarse tooth side. So when I first go through a dog, I will use this side. And once I've brushed through my dog, then I go to the medium side. So I do that because the pins are further apart with the sorry, honey. The pins are further apart, so it allows more coat to go through. But once I've separated it with my slicker, then I can go through with that finer tooth side and it will help separate that coat more. And then this comb is the same, it's the exact same comb, but it's larger. So if you've got a bigger size dog, um, I would recommend using the larger just because it covers more um, dog when you're grooming. Um, but if you're more comfortable using smaller tools, which I am, I use a smaller, um, smaller comb. And then we're going to talk about our fine tooth comb. So I love a fine tooth comb and I actually can't groom without one of these combs. This separates the coat so well. So I will never use this on a, um, an unwashed dog. I'll always use it on a clean dog um, only because the pins, they're quite flexible. So you can, if you can see me sort of bending those pins compared to this one, they, that's really hard to push up. So this is a more durable comb. Whereas this comb is, our fine tooth comb, is used more for separating coat um, when we begin to start trimming our dog's fringe and things like that, which we're going to be doing next week. When we start you know, really getting our dog's coat ready for scissoring, for clipping. This is a perfect comb because it separates and moves coat to where you want it um, straight away. But I will never use this on an unwashed coat because it is so fine and the pins actually taper down to a fine point. So it really penetrates. And as you go through the coat and lift the coat, I won't pull it through because it will hurt her because we haven't brushed her yet. But once we separate that coat, it really goes to the base, to the skin, and pulls that coat up, ready to season wear. These combs are great, but I always go through at the end with a fine tooth comb. Okay, so that's a little bit about... Um, brushes and our combs just so you get a little bit more of an understanding um, about your different tools so you might not have these brushes at home or some of you guys will but um, the people that don't there is um, other type of slickers so this is a really common slicker as well and the pins are still similar to these ones as well if you have a dog that has a longer coat um, you could go for a slicker that has longer pins so these pins will just penetrate down towards the base of that coat compared to 
So you can see the difference, that's a shorter pin and then that's a longer pin. I mostly use a shorter pin on my dogs because they're not overly long and I've only got small breeds but if you've got um, you know like a bigger type standard poodle size dog um, with longer hair, longer pins are better. So longer for longer, shorter for shorter. Um, pretty easy. Okay, so let's talk about our, um, quickly talk about setting up for brushing. I always groom my dogs in the same place every time. So even if I'm grooming at home, I will still pop them up on a bench and I will still use a non, oh, honey, 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 yes. Um, I'll always use a non-slip mat underneath and even if I'm popping them on a towel or they're a little blanket or something, I'll always use a non-slip mat underneath. So the, if you do have a dog that is a little bit nervous, they're going to feel really secure by not sliding around. Like that's a first step at making your dog feel really comfortable is popping a non-slip mat underneath. And that's about, you know, getting our dogs nice and conditioned for the grooming process and it gives them a chance to really understand what is about to happen to them so they really get an idea of okay i'm going to be groomed today because she's popped the non-slip mat on the table i'm on the table i'm ready to go so i try and avoid brushing my dogs on the couch or anything like that because that's a time when they should be relaxing so um yeah try and group them in the same place every time and that tends to help so when we're grooming our dogs, little areas that we want to um, we want to keep oh, okay. Little areas that we want to keep um, in mind are if your dog wears a collar and Honey wears a collar every day, and if your dog walks with a harness as well. So these are areas that can get quite knotty quite quickly. So usually with Honey. She hasn't had a haircut for quite a while because it's um, been locked down in Melbourne. But I will scissor quite short around her um, collar area so it just helps in between grooming that she's not got like lots of knots around her, her collar area. And that includes our harness area. So if you've got a dog that wears a harness, and with lockdown, we tend to be walking our dogs a little bit more. Um, it's a good idea to take the harness off when you get home and really brush those areas out. Okay, so there are our sort of areas that I always tend to look for as a groomer is the areas if the dogs are in collar, harness, um, things like that. So as we're grooming our dog, it's important that when we're grooming our front legs, that we're pulling our dog's legs or moving our dog's legs out forward and not lifting their legs higher than, you know, their point of shoulder because they're not going to feel comfortable. So if we gently move her leg out forward and gently hold her elbow in the palm of our hand, this will help secure that front leg. And if you, sorry about the crying. <laughs> if, um, if you feel your cavoodle, or feel your dog, you will be able to gently move that leg out forward. And I just move it out to the point where I think that her leg is going to move to. So I'm not pulling it out so she's uncomfortable. I'm just gently moving it forward. And... Just gently going to spray some coat conditioning spray on her leg. So this will help create more hydration in her coat and it will allow me to be able to remove more dead hair in those little legs. So I'm going to use my, um, my Flexi Slicker today and I'm going to gently go downwards first with the softer side of my slicker and then moving that slicker down. It's all right, honey. Good girl. And I've still got hold of her elbow area just so she knows that I'm supporting her 
her leg and she's feeling really comfortable. And then as I feel like I've removed a few knots, then I'm going to brush upwards. And when I brush upwards, I'm going to brush a section at a time. So this is called line brushing. And what line brushing does is it makes sure we're not missing any hair. So um, because if we just go through with our slicker and quickly brush, we've missed a load of coat. And um, what causes knots in dogs is um, dead coat. So every dog still sheds, so um, they have to shed for new healthy hair to grow. So we want to remove that dead, dull hair so that new coat can then grow through. So then it makes our coats really, really shiny. So just going to get a little bit of more spray. Right there so you can see. And still with the softer side. I'm just going to gently brush upwards. Thank you, honey. Good girl. And just brushing upwards. I think honey gets brushed maybe once or twice a week. Um, so her mum's just amazing. Good girl. And then gently still holding the paw. And then brushing at the back of our back leg. And I'm still only doing a small section. And this is the key, just to do a small section. If you're just introducing your dog to grooming, it's a really good idea to only do maybe two to five minutes every day, um, especially if you are trying to remove any little knots and tangles. So going up. In that small section and it's a good idea when we are using our slicker that we're going up or down there's no really no point and it's incorrect use going sideways and remember earlier how we were just talking about how our pins are made they're actually made and designed to go up the coat and then go back down the coat. So if we start going sideways, it actually doesn't brush down to the base of the coat. Good girl, darling. So once we've gone through one section, I like to just cross check with my comb. So there's no knots in that area. But she has a few little tangles down between her little toes. So I'm going to gently hang on to her toes and then using my slicker, just gently work through this area. Good girl, good girl. And once I've gone through that area and she's still got a little tangle, there we go, it's gone. And that's all out. I'll just move those up. I'll just slide them up. Sit down, John. Sit down. Good girl. And then going through our next area. So we would follow this process all the way up her little legs. Good girl. And you can kind of feel when the slicker is smoothly running through the coat and not snagging on anything. And once you're at that point, then you can run your comb through that area. And now we're up to her little arm pitch. So sit down, darling. Good girl. When we're doing our arm pit, it's important to go right underneath our dog. So what we don't want to do is lift their elbow higher than their wither area because it's our job to make our dog feel really comfortable and secure. So I like to get really underneath and then use my slicker to then um, remove any knots from that armpit area. And just get a little knot there. Go out. Good girl. 
And then we can cross check with our comb. And there's like the tiniest little knot through that area. And then if we look at our other side, so maybe if I move her this way, good girl. Spray our underarm. And then I need to get underneath her and then gently remove those little knots and tangles. And this is where our harness sits as well. So I know that she does get little, um, because remember I said her hair is quite fine, it does get little snags of little knots in there. And then just gently removing that. Good girl, honey. Good girl. Yes. And it's a really good idea to keep rewarding our dogs. Has everybody got their grooming tools with them and grooming their cavoodles as well? You could have a little cavoodle groomer on. And then all those knots are gone. And I always tend to brush all my legs first. So um, we'll just do this front leg and then pretend that we've done her other front leg and we'll move on to her back legs. So again, remember how we were supporting her elbow area with the palm of my hand so I could really support her joint so she um, wasn't sliding around or anything like that. It's similar to the back leg. So I, I like to support their knee area with my hand. Um, so I've always got control of it. And then I do the same technique. So spraying our co-conditioning spray. And I'm just going to brush this section first and then brush this section and then that section and then that section. So starting with her foot area and her hock area first, going up and down. Remember not brushing sideways, always up and down. And I'm not sure if you guys can hear the slicker with the little knots and tangles. So when the slicker begins to run through smoothly, that's when we can pop our comb through to cross check there's no knots and tangles. And it's important when we go through our dog's coat that we're not um, going over the same area too much. So once there's no knots and it's running through nice and freely, I can use, oh, there's everyone can see. I can use my comb to just cross check that I re I've removed those knots. If I feel like there's still knots in there, always use a co-conditioning spray and then work your slicker back through that area and making sure we're not, you know, going in too hard, that it's just, you know, slow and steady. And I'm a firm believer, slow and steady always wins a race. So if we start doing really fast movements with our dog, it might make him really nervous as well. So I tend to go nice and slow, go with how the dog is feeling. So um, for Honey, um, I wanted to relax her a little bit more. So just using um, slow movements to begin with. And with her back leg, I'm not moving it right over her back or anything like that. It's just so she feels really, really comfortable in the position I'm grooming her in. Grooming her in. And you can see as I'm heading up towards that knee area, I just tend to let more hair go because I'm holding it with that hand as well. And if you do have a dog that's a little bit um, nervous and won't stay still, honey is amazing. 
Um, you can pop, get somebody to actually stand in front and just gently um, pat them and make them feel really safe and secure. And while I've got their leg in this position, I tend to do the insides of the back legs as well. And there we go. And then I'm going to let a little bit more hair out of where I'm holding her knee. Good girl. She's calmed down now because she knows that she, this is where she gets groomed. And then our comb's running through really, really smoothly. So, and then her next, okay. and the next part. So I'm still holding onto that knee area, but when I brush that knee joint, I'm just going to release my hand a little bit just so I can get through that. Put my comb through and then brush the rest of her. <laughs> she doesn't know about the camera. <laughs> and then brush the rest of her body. Her legs, sorry. And then we can use our comb to make sure there's no knots and tangles. Okay, so that's how I would do the back legs. So let's move towards her. Once I've done each leg, then I will start to brush their head and then move down their body, finishing with their, their tail. So this is where I will remove her little collar. I know, I'll put it back on. And then facing her head downwards, I'm just going to use some co-conditioning spray and then spray, pop her head up and then spray her neck. And when we're grooming our dog's face, so I'm going to go through this with a little bit more detail next week when um, we start to trim her little fringe. But it's really important to hold on to a little bit of hair when we're grooming their face. So what this actually does is when they move, so if she pops her head up or quickly to the side, I can actually feel when that's going to happen and I can pull the slicker away or pull scissors away or clippers. So it's a really good, um, like a, gives you a really good indication of how the dog's going to react when you're popping a slicker towards their head. So you can see that when, I'm going to brush her little fringe, but she's bobbing her head down a bit so I can feel the weight of her pushing down. If I was holding um, around her neck area, so around this area, I couldn't actually feel that and I don't have control. And you can see that she's kind of just moving her head everywhere and then I'll be trying to brush going, oh, honey, honey, let me let me um, brush you. Whereas when we're holding on to their little bit of chin hair here, and I don't hold it so it's uncomfortable, I just hold it firmly um, and I just pop their jaw on the back side of my hand just so I can feel when she's going to move and then I can quickly pull whatever equipment I'm using away. Good girl. So I'm going to begin by brushing her skull area first and I'm going to switch to the little um, slicker with the protective pins and then just gently work my slicker through her skull area. And I've still got hold of her chin hair. And then I'm going to pop her ear backwards and um, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm going to come around this side. And then what I normally do is pop that ear backwards and then hold 
like this. So I can actually still keep brushing her, but I've still got control and feel when she's going to move. So I'm holding that ear back with my index finger and I've still got hold of her jaw so I can feel if she's going to move and then I pop my thumb over her nose area and if you're just beginning to groom your dog um, it might be easier just to hold this chin area so this is kind of your next step um, but it can take a dog a little bit of time to get used to that um, and I'm just going to spray a little bit of spray and holding her eye closed and then I'm going to gently brush out her cheek going into her neck area and it's a good opportunity to then follow through on the inside of our ears and then moving that ear forward and then popping that ear in my underneath my thumb and spraying with our co-condition spray and then working behind our ear into that neck area. There's a little bit of a tangle. But we've worked through it. And then our other side. So similar to what we were doing before, what I was just talking about, a little bit of spray and then just gently brushing downwards. And then why that is, I'll bring that back down. And while that ear is back, it's always a little bit awkward on your opposite side. We can brush the inside of her ear. And then pop that ear forward and brush behind our ears. So this is the area where I do see a lot of build up and we can get um, little bits of matting. So they do have, they can get um, some of my, um, um, one of my little poodles always gets like a little ball area that gets quite knotty there quite fast. So it can happen within a week and I'm like, oh my God, I bathed and brushed you last week and there was no knots and then all of a sudden there's um, a build-up of hair. So it is really important to go behind that ear area. And then our little muzzle. So I tend not to spray directly on the muzzle. I like to spray, let me just get rid of this dead hair. I like to spray on my slicker. So spraying the coat conditioning spray on the slicker and then I gently go through our muzzle. So if you've got a dog that has a lot of thick hair on the muzzle area, you can do the same techniques as what we did on the legs, just go through section at a time. So don't feel like you need to quickly get through all that coat. Um, you can just go through small areas. So don't feel like your grooming processes. So I'm going to move the hair at the front of her muzzle forward because I'm going to do two sections at a time. So just the first section and then I'm going to do the second section. And it's usually at the front of our muzzle where we get like little bits of um, food caught, um, water, grass. Um, we're coming into spring in Melbourne, so get lots of um, grass seeds, things like that. And then just brushing. I always like to brush um, kind of going backwards with the muzzle area and then downwards. And then our other side, so sit down, Bonnie. Sit down. So 
I'm just going to spray my slicker again and then separate the hair on her muzzle into two sections. And then the front section. And then underneath her jaw. So remember we're talking about holding on to this chin hair. I'm gently going to lift her head up slightly and then go with the direction of the coat growth underneath um, on her lower jaw. And once we've gone through her head with our slicker, I'm then going to go through um, with my comb, making sure I've removed all those knots and tangles, there's no food caught in there, um, and this is our good cross check, making sure we're separating all that coat. And behind those ears, and then there's no knots. And then our final step on our, um, our dog's head is our ears. So I like to place their ears flat in the palm of my hand and then gently spray. And I, again, do sections at a time. So this ensures that I'm removing all the knots and any dead coat. Um, one of my dogs forever gets food caught in his ears. Um, so I like to brush just small sections at a time. And I generally do three, so one, two, three. So one, and then the middle section. And you can actually feel when your slicker is running through smoothly that there's no knots in there. And then our front section of our ear. And then pop it all together. And then again, using our comb to cross check that ear. And it's a good idea, some dogs have um, really thick ears and then some have um, more of a finer coat. So she has more of a finer coat. So if you do have those really thick ears, just honestly, just groom um, a section at a time. Like don't, again, don't feel like you need to rush through those ears. So I'm going to start at the front section on the opposite ear and then move to the middle and then the last section is the back of the ear and then the entire ear and then pop our comb through. Okay, so that's her head completely done. So you might have a caboodle that has more of a shorter body and longer legs, so um, and um, a longer head. So then you, this might be your whole grooming, and that's it. But um, for cavoodles that have long hair on their bodies and they have more of that teddy trim, this is where we will tend to go through their body with the slicker now. So I like to start with their neck area with their body. And I'm going to use my larger protective pin slicker because um, I'm using the larger one so we will cover more area when we're brushy. Sorry, honey bunny. And I'm going to pop her, I'm just going to sit her down so she's comfy. Pop her head backwards slightly just so she's comfortable, not so she's uncomfortable and her head's all the way back. So just so she's nice and comfortable. And then just gently go downwards with my slicker. And I'm just, again, doing sections on my body as we go. And this is where her harness sits as well. So she does get quite a few little tangles at the front of those um, front legs. So going down that neck area. Um, and cross-checking 
with our comb. And once I've done the front, her chest area, I'm going to move that ear forward. And I've still got hold of her, um, her mouth and her jaw area, just so I can feel if she's going to move away. Spray some coat conditioning spray, and then gently work our slicker through our towards our shoulder area and our withers. And then our comb going through. And then our other area, our other side. So if we hit a knot or a tangle, I know, I know. If we hit a little tangle, we're not going to rip our comb through or try and remove any knots with our comb. We would remove the comb, spray some more coat conditioning spray, and then go through with our slicker again and work that through. And then cross check, and we have still got knots there, so remove the comb and then work our slick up through that area that has a knot. So we're not going to remove knots with that people tend to um, use a comb first and then they'll use a slick up, but it's actually the opposite way around. Shake it out, darling. Good girl. And then again, just working in sections till we get to her tail. And down towards that elbow area. And then there's a knot there, so I'm not going to pull that comb through. I'm going to pull the comb out and then gently work our slicker through. And then our comb runs freely through that coat. And if you, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but her coat that we've brushed is a lot brighter than the coat that we haven't brushed. And the reason for that is, is because as we're brushing her, the little knots and tangles that's in her coat is actually dead hair. So the dead hair is actually dull hair. And the dead dull hair is a hair that tends to get matted. So this is why we need to constantly brush and remove that, that coat. And then we'll get that nice, um, that nice colour coming through our dog's coat and get that nice natural shine come through. And then just working down towards that flank area and her rib cage. When we start to brush underneath our dogs, our underline, I like to just gently do a small area because I find that this is an area where our dogs are constantly um, wet from you know the dewy grass in the morning or in the evening or as they're walking they're flicking um, little bits of dirt and debris up there so I tend to go both directions so against the coat growth and then with the coat growth and this will ensure that we're removing any knots, tangles, any um, grass seeds, any burrs, anything like that. And again, I'm moving that leg forward in her motion of movement. So I'm not moving it out too much because as soon as I move it out too much, I can feel that she's um, not really enjoying it. So just in a nice, comfortable position. Good girl. Has anyone got questions so far? No questions so far? Awesome. 
This must be all doing amazingly. And then moving back towards the back of her leg. So once I hit this section and I haven't groomed that back leg, I'm then going to start the process of grooming her foot, her hock, her knee, and then moving up to that um, hip area. So I'm just going to go downwards first. She has quite little bits of grass in her. And then once I feel that slicker moving through, and I think it's not a matter of, like I said before, about quickly um, getting through those little knots and tangles, you actually need to feel where the knots are. So if you feel like your slicker is snagging on this bit, then you can really concentrate on this area and really work the slicker through. And then cross check with our comb. So I feel like it's snagging a bit on the inside of that back leg. So I'm just going to work it through a little bit more. And then it goes through nice and smoothly. Um, before I finish um, grooming her entire um brushing her entire body. I want to quickly talk about um, de-matting tools. And there is a little bit of an art to using a de-matting tool. And the idea of a de-matting tool is not to remove entire, say if you've got a dog that has um, a really thick coat and um, sometimes, um, all of a sudden a dog's coat can become matted because it just gets so long and um, it just gets beyond control. <laughs> and we've all been there where all of a sudden our dog's got too many knots and then has to be clipped down. But if your dog has small knots and um, especially those little mats behind those ears, um, de-matting tools can work really great, but like I said earlier, there is an art to using it. We don't want to use this, these tools, these de-matting tools, on our entire dog because it's, if we use these on our entire dog, um, it can be quite uncomfortable for our dog and it does remove quite a, a lot, a large amount of hair. So if we were de-matting, um, which I would never deem out an entire dog, but if we were, um, you would almost, um, your dog would not have a healthy coat, the hair would be really broken, um, your dog would probably be really upset and angry. Well, you're going to use them on you, you're all right. Um, so they're only used for small areas and they're designed to split up mats, um, not to brush through the mat. They're designed to... Um, split the mat and help tease that hair out because then once the hair is nice and loose and split and the mat is separating, then we would go through with our slicker and then our comb. So they're not designed to go through the entire dog. Um, they are designed to just help separate the mat and remove um, the bulk of the mat. Um, because again, mats are formed by um, the dead unwanted coat. So when the dead hair is actually dead and it's removed from the hair follicle, the cuticles on the hair shaft begin to open and the coat can, um, that bit of hair is more susceptible to breaking. So that's how our mats tend to form. So these are all um, dead hair on my fingertips. And then once... Um, they're released from the hair follicle and they're not removed by brushing, that's when the mat can start to form because the hair is more susceptible to breaking and um, it's, it's dead, so we need to remove it. 
Okay, so when we use a dematching tool, so I'm going to use um, this one first. I tend to, um, let's do an area. She has a bit more coat. I tend to just gently, okay, I'm trying to see so you guys can see. I just gently tease that hair out. So you see the motion that I'm, I'm doing. So I'm not flicking my wrist. I'm just gently teasing that that knot. And then if you can see, like this is what the um, what it's removed. So and I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's not shiny hair, it's quite dull um, and was ready to be removed. So once we've used our dematting tool to separate that little knot or mat. Then we can go through with our slicker in that area. And if we feel like the slicker is really snagging and we can't get through with that slicker, then we can, again, use the same technique with our dematting tool and then just gently work through that coat and then pick up our slicker. So I kind of go between the both. I won't use this excessively. Um, I'll just use it to help separate a knot. And then go through with our slicker and then go through with our comb. So that's a correct way to use a dematting tool. And this is also a dematting tool. So you use it the same way. So Again, coming into that coat, I'm trying to do it so you guys can see. Maybe, yeah. So I would still support that, that leg, but we would come through and just gently tease, um, tease that knot out from the base and just tease it out, tease all that hair in that knot. And then go through with our slicker. And then if the slicker is still snagging, go back through with our dematting tool and help separate. Back with our slicker. And then our comb. And I just want to quickly point out with the dematting tools, sit down, honey bunny, that they do have little blades on them. So they will actually um, really separate that mat and that little knot. So you can see. So they're really great for, for teasing out those little knots. So here's one here. So see how it's penetrating through underneath that knot, but instead of just pulling it through, I'm just gently going through underneath that knot, pulling a little bit, and then it just helps separate that hair. And then eventually that little knot will come out. So it's just small sections at a time. So we can see what it's actually pulled out. So there's a little bit of um, grass in that. There's a bit of a tangle. And once we remove that main knot and the hair separated, and then we can go through with our slicker. And then using our comb, where I put it, and there's our comb going through. And the exact same process with this little guy. Gently working that through, so you guys can see, gently working that through that coat.
and then we can see how the little knots and tangles have um, been removed. And then with our slicker and with our comb. So just quickly as well, um, when we're brushing our dog, if you feel like you're going through your dog's coat, but you feel like it's still snagging on coat, and you're like, oh, but my comb's going through and there's no, there's no knots, it's because you've got a build-up of dead coat in your slicker. So just get your comb and then gently remove that dead coat in the slicker. So that's all dead, unwanted hair that would cause lots of knots and tangles. So the last thing on our little caboodle is our dog's tail. So it's really super important when we are brushing our dog's tail that we don't brush up, that we only brush with. So using our spray. And again, I'm going to use my slicker on sections at a time. So my first section is at the base of her tail. And just separating that coat really well. And if it is uncomfortable for your dog, you can actually just hold on to that tail and hold on to that hair so then it's not pulling on your dog's tail. Because if you've got a dog that has um, some back issues, it can actually, um, grooming their tail um, can actually be a little bit uncomfortable for them. One of my dogs has um, a sore back, um, so I ended up just um, clipping her tail quite short just so I don't have to constantly brush it. And, um, she would just feel a lot more comfortable. Next section. A bit more spray in there. And then down. Next section. And making sure we've got both sides. So flipping that tail around. and going right through that tail. And then using our comb. So I tend to do the same thing, so just go through our little sections. And when we get to the tip of our tail, so a little tip, what I like to do is hang on to that because sometimes the tip of um, our dog's tail can get caught in between the teeth of our comb. So it's a it's actually a danger point on a dog, what we call as groomers, um, danger points when we're grooming. The tip of the tail when we're using a comb is a danger point, so we're taught to hold onto that tip while we're using a comb on that tail. And then there's no knots. All done. Um, just quickly before I leave you guys to go and groom your amazing dogs, um, when we're using our slicker, it's important to keep our wrist nice and straight and not flicking upwards like this. So see when I flick up that it's not actually brushing the hair and she moved a little bit so it is uncomfortable for her. So if we're doing this, it's not brushing. We need to keep our wrist nice and straight and work through that coat. So no flicking, no sideways, always going with or against the coat growth. Okay, so that concludes our brushing section, um, session, sorry. So um, did we have any questions, Paul? No questions, you guys are amazing. Um, please send us some um, some photos of you guys grooming your dogs and um, some um, happy snaps, that would be amazing.
Um, and if you do end up grooming your dog later on and you do have questions, um, just shoot us a message. I'm normally um, pretty active after these sessions because people are messaging um, with other questions that they're, they've found as they're grooming their dog. Um, oh, honey, 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 honey. <laughs> She still wants to be groomed. And um, next week we are going to be trimming her fringe and her feet. So if you guys um, want to join us, it will be the same time. Or if you know of anybody that um, that would interest, especially in those lockdown areas that um, are tying their dog's fringes back, um, definitely let them know. And I'm going to teach you guys um, how to scissor a fringe and keep their eyelashes. So Honey has these amazing eyelashes, so I'll be teaching you guys that as well, to not cut the eyelashes if that's what you prefer. Um, so um, that's it. So any questions, please let us know, and um, please send me some photos. I'd love to see some happy snaps of your dogs. And, um, yeah, have fun with your dog. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>